You are listening to Revealing Real Estate Podcast, where we dive into getting over your fear of taking risk in real estate and making money while you sleep. I'm Nico Pedizano, your host and real estate guru with over 20 years of experience. It's time to get real. All right, all right, all right, man. I tell you, the next guest that we're going to have on this show, welcome back to Revealing Real Estate. We have a wonderful guest uh, that we had to go to him before he came to us. So we are at Sixth Avenue Homes headquarters. And I'd like to welcome Anthony Macri to the show. Ant, welcome to the show, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, Nick. It took, it took a lot of twists in my arm. You know, I don't like to do these things. But... Well, you're a busy guy for no. sure, for sure. <laughs> it's hard to get you on there. Your first, your first podcast ever, man. How, how exciting first, is this? First podcast ever. You know, when you're listing my homes, I don't even like to be close to the camera. Yeah. Uh, so I, I remember it, one big open very, house. Very new to me. I remember one big open house we did. You were telling me to tell to tell everybody that I was the builder. I'm like, I can't do that. <laughs> How can I tell everybody I'm the builder? You're the builder. This is your credibility. This is the product that you put out to the table. That did happen. That did happen. It's a true story. But you know, to get Anthony on the show, he is he was very nervous. He's he's camera shy. So I'm glad to have him here. So just to warm him up. I had to get this guy almost. We we had to have a few drinks. So listen, to just to, just to start the show off right, we got we got to pour a drink. We got to say a cheers it. together Let's for for it. a lot okay. of celebration. Life needs to be celebrated, people, and that's what's most important. That when you have achievements in life, you need to celebrate it. So here's a shot. Let's do it. We got a new set. We have a little Don Julio tequila. If they're listening, we always do take sponsorship for revealing real estate. <laughs> we need sponsorship, people. So if anybody's listening and wants to sponsor the show. We'd be glad to have you come in and sponsor the show. We are looking to change up things around and, and have some different guests, some different settings. And if you want to be on the podcast, please reach out. We'd love to have you. Uh, we'll come to you if needed, as we did with uh, with our one of our, our cli- long-time clients. I think you're one of the most long-lived clients yeah. I've had. You've I, been a client since I got my real estate license. I feel like I kind of bit myself in the ass here because I listen to all your episodes and then I'm the guy who's texting you right after, like, hey, you should have done this. Well, maybe do this. Maybe do this. And then today, you showed up. <laughs> Last night, you text me. You're like, hey, I got to do something. I need access to your office. I said, okay, no problem. I let you in. And then this morning, I came here, and you had all these microphones set up. Yeah. <laughs> Like, what the fuck is going on? I say, yeah, that's it. You want, you, you I, want, I, I will accept constru- constructive okay. criticism. One hundred percent. I don't take things personally. I'm not very sensitive. But now we're gonna have you on the show, and I'm gonna make you realize how tough That's it is it. to be on camera, <laughs> to be on a podcast. Cheers. But but cheers to that, and, and cheers to our success together. Yes. Not many relationships last this long, and too many more years ahead. Yes. Uh, okay, let's get right into this, man. Uh, because it's long overdue, and 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 I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of viewers that are gonna want, really want to listen to this podcast. And if you're an inspiring builder who wants to start building houses for a living or you just started out, I think this is a great episode for you to really kind of catch into to understanding uh, certain mistakes. And I'm going to give you some insights on, on, on what things to look for when you're, when you're looking for land. Uh, and Anthony is going to give you some of the mistakes he's made as, as building homes, especially today. You want to try to minimize uh, your mistakes when building a house because the cost uh, associated to building a house today is very expensive, as you know, inflation has increased. Uh, but I just a little bit about your story. Um, what made you want to become a custom home builder? Uh, when did you start? Uh, and where did you start? Three full question. So I started, uh, so, so when I came out of high school, I don't, and I, I don't want to make this all about my whole story and this, this and that, because my story is nothing. It's nothing crazy. Nothing to brag right? about. Yeah, yeah, it's nothing to brag about. Dude, I'm, I'm just not, kidding. I'm, not, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not Steve Jobs working out of a garage coming out with an iPhone. But uh, <laughs> basically finished high school. I went to uh, college and I was like, I want to be the next Joe Bowen and, and broadcast Leaf Games. And I did that for about four months at Seneca. And then I went to uh, the, the, the Olympics in Italy, 2000, 2006, uh, touring. And then I came back and I go, like, really, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> 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 I can't even do a podcast 
you know, 18 years later, 17 or whatever it is, 17 years later. But so how, how am I going to broadcast Leaf Gibbs? So anyways, long story short, I had a, a, an honest conversation with my dad. And he's like, listen, what do you want to do? Like, you're, you're not going to be you're not going to be working on TSN. You're not going to be doing that stuff. So he goes, why don't you pick up a trade? So I started working a trade. Uh, I started doing electrical. And then I started making contacts. And then I started uh, working for a custom home builder. And then when I did that, I, uh, I said, you know what? Maybe I could do this on my own. And that was 2011. And uh, 2011, bought my first lot in Kleinberg. Um, and then I start, I built a... I dove right into it, man. I, I <laughs> that lot there was an it was it was an eighty by one eighty. So I built a six thousand square feet house, wow. fifty eight hundred square foot house. Man, you started right at the top, eh? Yeah, and I was basically talk about talk about running there. Yeah, I basically started building, uh, you know, just trying to use as many trades as I could, like friends and whatnot. And then, uh, so yeah, that's where I started, and then, uh. Yeah, so that's basically where I started. So I, I just want to understand, like we, we talk about when we first started, a lot of advice was through the, through the meetings that we used to have with your architect and design. Well, no, back then you weren't even using a designer. We'll get yeah. into, we'll fast track that because I'm sure that's one of the things now that you've implemented on your team. And we're going to talk about your team Um. But uh, what I think it's important is, you know, what are the, what are, what, what's the mo what's, what's important about, and let's fast track, you've been in business for 15 years now. What's the most important thing that you've learned when building houses today? I think you got to, for instance, building houses, I think you got to trust your team. You got to trust the trades. So, so every single trade is a professional. And I got guys that, uh, guys that have worked with me from day one. And, and I joke with these guys. Like, I go back and I look at, like, budget reports from 2011. And, uh, and they'll be like, I'll look at a guy and I'll trade. And, and I'll call the trade, Finnish Carpenter. You know, Portuguese guy, Leapy. I'll be like, <laughs> buddy, <laughs> fuck, in 2011, you were charging me, f you know, 22 grand to, to finish this house. Now, how, how is it so much more? Uh, why am I paying 44 now? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. We, we joke around about that. But I think that the, the number one thing is team. And you got to be loyal, and you got to be honest. And uh, it's like any other business. But I think number one in construction is that because there's so many um, there's so many narratives that go around about construction, especially the custom home building, especially builders. They got this like this this nasty narrative that goes around them. And you you realize, oh. you get it with Try real being estate. a real estate agent, yeah, but Yeah, everybody, see every what real happens, estate yeah. agent a, is a douchebag who makes so much money, drives a Ferrari, doesn't work, and this, this, and that. Yeah. And, and then I see, yeah. like, yeah. and not to talk about you on this podcast too much, but, like, I tell friends and family, like, hey, I've been using Nick from day one, and I've seen Nick, like, listen, at the end of the day, Sometimes I'm like looking at that check I'm giving him and I'm like, you know, it's a lot, but it's worth it because I've seen a good agent make me that money back tenfold. And it's like, it's like construction, right? Yeah. I appreciate and, that. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's, that's what I've kind of built myself on. Uh, you you're know, I, I think as a custom home builder, your reputation is everything. It is. And, and, you know, I think longevity lasts when there's, there's likability, trustability, and, and being honest. Those are the three main factors uh, that I've set my precedence on and, and what, what really drives me. Um, the money for me becomes a byproduct. Um, yeah. First and foremost, uh, I, I look to put my passions first and, and understand that this is not just about the dollar. This is about making sure that we're going to guide somebody who's going to make one of the biggest transactions of their life become very, um, um, the experience needs to be, you know, that much like you are going to walk into, or like you're going on vacation and you're going to walk into a five-star hotel and you're going to be wowed. Yeah. That's what I want. And that's what me and my team try to portray. And I noticed that early on within your business, um, a lot of it, the advice that you were receiving 
especially even for myself, when we talked about your first build, I remember the one in Kleinberg, it was 6,000 square feet, and you've grown so much, and it was such a beautiful product that you built, but, you know, the, the nothing comes with experience. Uh, as a real estate agent, I'm not the same agent that I am today that I was when I first started, and I've grown so much, and you and I've watched your growth because we've been in business, we've been in business together for quite some time, working together in, in, in relation. Um, and a lot of my advice was, hey, let's not let's not de- break trends. Let's deal with what the norm is. Let's deal with hey, this house here sold. It had this type of kitchen. It had this type of layout. It was this square footage. This is the price point they got. Let's not risk to try to be different and then you know ruin our profitability when when it comes on the top end to now i see you and and your growth period to the point where it's like fuck that <laughs> you know what i mean i want to do what i want to do and i see your you you've exploded on the creative side of things when it comes to not doing what the norm is doing and and being a trend uh, a trendsetter and that what i see through the growth of your development can you can you just Kind of give us some insight on that. Yeah, so, you know, when I started out, obviously, I was 23, 24. Uh, I had the trust in my trades and my, 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 my architect and stuff. But at the end of the day, I'm still a 23, 24-year-old who's trying to build this house. It's hard for people to take that, you serious, right? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and the person that's going to buy that house might be, you know, 40, 50, 60 years old. So it's kind of like, you know, with all due respect, it's like, what the fuck does this kid know about fucking yeah. building houses? Yeah. <laughs> about, yeah. Not only yeah. like what what about to build houses because I have the trades that have done, you know, like I, all my guys are, 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 you know, they're all custom guys. They're all, you know, they got their reputation. They they do they do work for the some of the biggest custom builders in the city. So, but they need to be meticulous too, yeah. right? Like but, if, but, if you're if you're putting that type of product and you're a custom design home builder. You want to make sure that your 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 trades are dotting their eyes, crossing their t's. They're just as meticulous as you are, right? And 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 that's how I think you should be. You, you, that you've established your brand and your trend of who you are so, as a person. The biggest change for me, if we want to fast track this, because like I said, I don't, I don't want to you know talk about the upbringing and whatnot. If you want to fast track from where I was in twenty eleven. 2011 yeah, to Yeah, I want to know who was Anthony then and who is so, Anthony? Who's Anthony today? The, the big, that, that's the, that's the key question I want to know. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> the, 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 the biggest thing that I learned and and I and I and I found uh like you said it's you know we're dealing with people's biggest investment, most people's biggest investments of their lives. That's true. And uh the biggest change that I've had from you know today from um, you know 12 13 years ago was I used to build a home, a custom home, based on what my realtor, you, with all due respect, thought that. I, the, the, my, the, listen, I'm going to give you the safe approach. <laughs> my job is to get you in and get you out, right? So but I'm going to give you the safe approach. I thought, you know, what, 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 Nick, what Nick thought sold in this area, and then I would call my old mentors, guys I worked with, hey, what do you, what do you think about layout this, this, and that? And I was using an older an architect. Who was building more um he did a fantastic job but he was building more of a safe design and then i was doing that in Kleinberg, and in Kleinberg, the, the, the clientele was a little bit different for anybody who doesn't understand uh you're the, dealing with an italian community <laughs> yeah but you're, you're dealing I'll with a little bit of an italian community if you're not italian <laughs> believe me you wouldn't really uh, relate to this but if you're right. italian you know what we're dealing with yeah so I, everybody was like you know, you got to do the family room that opens to the kitchen and then this and then the dining room for when the family comes over. So what happened to me? Make sure you have the cantina uh, set up. Yeah, the cantina, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cold cellar was big. Put the zuprezata, but the lasuga, you know. I used to do... <laughs> and actually I remember when your dad used to come out. My dad would come by and be like, the cantina's too small. Extend the cantina. He's like, hey, where's the sink in the cantina? I go, then I'm not going to put a, a sink in the, <laughs> in the cold room. And he's like, yeah, but if they want to do the super sat and the wine, nobody's going to buy this house yeah. with no sink in the cantina. Yeah. I go, what are you talking about? Yeah. So the, and, the big, and, and when you're in Toronto, they're, they're making sure that you got a dog wash on the main oh, floor. Yeah. You know what I mean? So look at the different levels of, of hey. what we're dealing with between communities. So 
long story short, I think that, that the biggest change for me today than it was uh, 10 years ago or 20 years, or 15 years ago, was I started building homes to what I would like. And now that I've lived in these homes, I said, this works, this doesn't work, right? And uh, uh, like, for instance, like the laundry room on the, uh, people are still doing laundry rooms on the main floor. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you live upstairs. You don't and know I'm what trying it's to explain like. To, I'm trying to explain to my clients, like in the, the wives, and the, like, hey, where do you get changed? I get changed in my bedroom. So why is your laundry room in the mudroom? Yeah. Why when you have the service guy who's going to come and check your furnace, he's got to walk through your laundry room and see all your thongs with all due respect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, true. Like, 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 you know, so it's like, so there's a lot of practicality and I'm learning every day because things change every day. And, and the older I get, you know, I'm realizing now that I have two small kids, it's like, hey, playrooms are big. Playrooms are big. Yeah, playrooms yeah. are important, right? Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe your office, like in, in during COVID, the office and the gym were huge. Home office and gym were huge, right? So things are changing. People, a lot of people are working from home. So now any home that we design, it's like home office, home gym. Yes. Right? So there's things that yes. I'm always learning, but I'm kind of especially during to, COVID, right? That shift in the layouts and 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 what people want. Yeah. You know, people are uh, you know expect the unexpected, right? Yeah. When when COVID came around, gyms now became a uh, home gyms became very oh, important huge. because they couldn't go to the gym to go oh, work yeah. out no more, so they needed a home gym. And I think people now today are preparing a lot for that, right? Because who knows when the next outbreak could be, if it is, and 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 by the grace of God, it never happens again. But if it does, people are going to be a little but bit more prepared and they want it now. Even people just, I don't think people, like, I think people like having the luxury. So it's like now, you know, on every home we're putting in, so we have a budget. This is how much we can spend on this home. And it's like, it's crazy. It's like we took away certain money from the budget and we put it into home saunas. How many people were doing home saunas? Like, like now every house we do has a sauna. Uh, how about cold plunges? Cold plunges. <laughs> It's crazy. game changer. Yeah, man. cold plunge, and they're they're not they're not right? cheap, but it's like people. Yeah, like, people love it. Uh, if I build a house, man, I want I want my sauna, I want my steamer, I want my cold plunge, I want my gym, because health is wealth, man. Yeah, health is wealth, and and that's where 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 it drives. And and you know when you got a busy lifestyle, somebody who you're going to be building for, and I and I know you build for some really high end clients right now. Um, and, and that clientele today, they're going to want that luxury of life where they can come wake up in the morning, 5 a.m. Like I'm a, uh, I, I want to get my workout in prior to, you know, working out and then get my kids to school. But I need my, I need that facility there because my day, my schedule, you know, it, it is so rapid and so quick that I need to get up, go to the gym, do what I got to do, get my kids breakfast, take them to school, get to the office, run my day. Right, and, and it takes off, right? And I think that today is the new realm of the corporate world or, or, or the entrepreneur who, who's looking to be, become successful, right? I've been fortunate to, to deal with a lot of professional people, doctors, lawyers, you know, engineers, school teachers, and uh, they put so much trust into me to build them their home that... that uh, but it's it, not... It, yeah, and I'm sorry, I don't want to cut you off, but it's not just about when you're building their home. It's about you not leaving them after they move into the house, right? And I think servicing that client from beginning to the end, you know, you, you're a registered Terry on home warranty builder. So I, there's a commitment there, yeah, right? And, and, and at Terry on, it's funny because when I was 22, 23, I, I remember I, I, would, I was so scared to do this Terry on test. And I would think about it all the time. And I was like, holy shit, man, this guy, I got I to gotta do this test. And I had some background, and then I went to George Brown, and I got my education on it. And then after, I thought I was ready for the test, and then I did the test, and, I, and you know, I just smoked it. But then after, I had to have an oral interview with, with this guy from Terrion, and he's asking you a bunch of questions for an hour about, like, why you should be, why somebody should trust you to build their house. I'm, like, 22, 23, and I was, like, nightmares on this stuff. And now, like, Terrion to me is, like, a second thought. It's like, yeah, I got Terrion, like, but, like, you know, It'll never get to Terry on because because you're not going to make sure that that client's no gonna, man yeah. and and, it, and it's like I've been I've been fortunate to deal with some of the 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 most professional and genuine homeowners and these these people uh, guys and girls have been they're professionals in their in their industries and they're some of the best 
and I'm not going to drop names or anything, but there's some of the best in the city of Toronto of what they do. And it's crazy. It's crazy when a anesthesiologist is buying your house and this guy is going to work every day, putting people to sleep and is risking that person's life and the stress that this guy deals with. And then his phone call on the way home is to me to talk about, you know, tile color or something that's yeah, crazy yeah. and, and he trusts design. me for so much right yeah and it and it's crazy like you know we just we just i just did a house for a guy who's this like prominent like surgeon in toronto yeah and it, and it's like i i and i'm like man why why do you why do you like like you you have such a stressful job and he looks at my stuff and he's like hey we you know we got to do this this and this and i'm like yeah yeah it's gonna get done and he's like and he looks at me and he's like how are you so calm doing this? And I'm like, dude, it's only construction. Like, <laughs> it's going to get done. And I'm like, you're the one who's, you're the one who's cutting people open, yeah, man. You're the one who's cutting people open. Yeah, and, and, yeah. And, and, and I've been fortunate to like deal with these people. And, and, and it's, uh, it's, and that's honestly the most, that's honestly the most uh, gratifying thing that I can deal with. Right. And it's like, I'm, I'm presenting the, somebody's home it's it's different than you know if you sell cars or if you sell tvs or if you sell anything like somebody's home that i'm giving them is probably their most prized possession and uh like that's the most gratifying thing from for 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 my industry and then a lot of these guys are uh, guys and girls i become friends with right like like especially now you know you have a relationship (laughs) right it's like me you know and i could relate to it because at the end of the day uh, my clients now have be- a lot of my clients have become friends, and you know, uh, by the grace of God, I've built so many wonderful relationships, and and that's why I love what I do is because of the people that I meet every single day, that I'm able to grow with, and learn from, um, and, and and you know, go to those next steps within the journey of life, and uh, you know, I don't want to get all all you know religious Sorry. here and and, <laughs> and everything like that and sobby and stuff because. I, I, I uh, you know, but at the end of the day, I, I just think that, you know, there is a higher power. I think people are put together uh, or destined to be with the, with each other for, for many different reasons. Um, and, and I believe the universe is going to give us many different answers and put us together with so many different things, whether it's through business uh, or other ways of building relationships on that. Um, but what I want to talk about now, and I'm just going to kind of shift over here, is, is the fact that you started in Kleinberg. You have now moved to Toronto. The majority of your business is now set up in Etobicoke. I have something to do with that for sure because I've been trying to get you into the city of Toronto since you started. The reason being, and I want people to understand, is that you got to look at where 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 it, the, the main profitability in home building is in the purchase. It's in the buy, right? It's in the it's in the the land acquisition that you're going to get, right? Because it has to start at making sure that you you buy it at a good price um, so that, you know, and, and inflation and markets do trend because there's a lot of risk involved in being a home builder that people really don't understand. The overhead, um, the amount of, of money that you have to risk for profitability is well-deserved in your industry, in your sector. Um, and, there's, and there's a lot of, of responsibility that comes with that. And starting to build within the Kleinberg sector, I always used to think, hey, listen, a lot of the main developers and builders that, that were, were generated and started happened here in Woodbridge and Vaughan, right? A lot of Italians have become major developers. And, and I want to get on this topic, right? And I'm like, well, right now, these guys are, if there's a developer who's going to sell you a lot, He's not going to be leaving much room on the table for you as a builder to want to become profitable. on. Maybe for the end user, somebody who's going to move into that house may make a, a lot more sense for him to buy that lot from somebody who's going to sell you a lot. But he ain't leaving much profitability on the table for you as a builder to become profitable. And we're all in business to be profitable. Yeah. And so a lot of my direction was early on is, listen, we need to get ourselves out of the Vaughn community or York region community. The reason being is that I don't think the profitability of the return on investment is going to be as profitable as it is, as if you base yourself in the city of Toronto, because you are going to be dealing with the lawyer, the corporate guy who, who's a banker, the doctor, 
you know, uh, and, and that's who your customer is going to be. So understanding consumer base is very important. And I remember I took you to Young and Finch, and then I, we went to we established ourselves in Etobicoke, and we went to a Forest Hill Avenue Road in Lawrence area. I was like, hey man, this is where we start need to put some imprints on this to start developing that sector. Um, so you started in Kleinberg, and then and then I think one of the transitions is, is because you're very renowned in, 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 in the Etobicoke community, and that's where you've kind of imprinted your brand and who you are as established builder. Uh, can, you, can you walk us through a little bit of that transition and why you decided to go from a, a Vaughn community to now the Toronto market, especially in Etobicoke? Enjoying this episode? Subscribe to our channel and leave us a comment down below to let us know what you want to learn next. Make sure you're following our Instagram and TikTok to stay up to date on our new episodes every Friday. So, you know, there's a lot of a lot of points you brought up there, and, and I want to touch on all of them. But to answer your last question, the reason why was freedom. Uh, in Kleinberg, I was building in a, uh, a subdivision that had architectural control, and every house looked the same. And I, and I would, I would, I would uh, my architect and I would, would present uh, these drawings and these renderings of like beautiful, unique homes to the architectural control firm uh, that was, that it was a separate identity that had nothing to do with the developer and it would all get shut down. And, and, and to put it in the layman's terms, it was like, you know what, you, you're not allowed to do dark brick here or black brick. You're not allowed to do, you know, uh, you know, uh, peaks the way you are back then it was like you couldn't even consider doing a modern build back then um so that's why i moved to etobicoke and then i found in etobicoke uh i had more freedom business wise i remember talking to a one of the most like a guy that i look up to in in toronto i think he's one of the best builders in toronto is uh, Gornick, Tony Gornick, and I was working for another builder back in the day, and uh, he and Tony Gornick was building on uh, on Valecrest in Etobicoke, and he was building next door, and I and I was just like I was a laborer for the builder that I was working for, and I would look over and I would see him and, and I would go talk to him, and I was just like pick his brain, pick his brain, pick his brain, and he would tell me all the time, and he'd be like, I'd be like, hey, if I want to start my own, you know, my own building cus- uh, company, wh- what would you suggest? And he would say. Uh, Location, location, location. I'd be like, ah, oh, fuck, everybody says location, location, location. And he'd be like, no, 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 like, it's true. Like, location, location, location. Spend a little bit more money on the lot when you're buying it, but it'll sell, you know, overpay for the lot 100000 but you'll sell it for 500000 more when you're when you're, you're done. And the because, one thing... Because you know there's a big market there yeah. that's looking to, in that, within that sector or that community. Yeah, and, and, and the one thing that he told me was schools. And, you know, I'm giving up all my secrets on this podcast right now. <laughs> No, but, but, it, but, it's, but it's true though. Like schools, yeah. schools are so important. This is why we do what we do. Yeah, schools, schools are so important. Uh, so what I started doing was I just started researching the best schools in the city, best schools in Toronto. And Toronto is such, it's such a big city. It's a metropolitan, but it's untapped, right? Like there's so much potential. R- potential, and there's people like if I ask you right now, where are the best schools in Toronto? Like you, you might not know, right? Uh, you might know, but you might not know. Yeah. But yeah. but so what I started doing is studying these schools, and you don't want to be beside schools. And, and I remember this, this is uh, a great point. Somebody told me that people with a lot of money, successful people, want to send their kids to the best possible schools. Like Nick, yourself, you got you got two kids, mm-hmm. right? You 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 do well for yourself. Your mm-hmm. kids are are are, you know. Their success is probably number one to you, mm-hmm. right? Like if you could put your kids in a situation where they're a few steps ahead, then you would. And there's a lot of schools in Toronto that offer that. Right. And, and there's a lot of schools. That were, so, so, and I remember that, um, this guy was telling me, he told, he told me one time, he goes, he goes, you can pay $50,000 a year to send your kid to a private school, but that kid can't get into the secondary school. That is gonna really push them, but if you buy a house over here, you're you're kind of in the district, right? 
that the feeder school, the feeder elementary school sends them to this high school that it's like pretty much like a private school. So it, it's... It almost, they, they, they work in, they in work sync it. together. So, 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 somebody, so somebody who's looking at buying a house, they can, they look at that. And there's a lot of educated builders, uh, sorry, builders and buyers. There's a lot of educated buyers in the city of Toronto. Well, they'll look at it and they'll be like, look, you know what? I'll live in this area. It's going to cost me a couple hundred thousand dollars more, but my kids are going to this school. And then they don't give a shit. They don't give a shit. They don't give a shit. Yeah, they know. They're going to write you the check. They're going to pay a price. They're like, fuck it. And they're going to go with it. You build them a good product. You know, you're a reputable builder. That's what they want to know. And and, and, and so, so that's when I say like location, 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 right? Yeah. So we've, we, so that's why I like I moved to a, a, a Tobacco, which was like, I I like a Tobacco. Do you know what one of the first things I do when I go list a house and I'm gonna walk into that home before I walk into the home? Do you know what my team research is? What's that? What's the school? Of, what's the school rating at the Fraser, Fraser Institute of Canada? It's the best. It's the best. It's important. Yeah. It's probably the number one reason I would say why people want to move in to that location. I could put anything. I you rank want. it to the top. I could build you a house, yeah. with the pool, the theater, the golf simulator, everything you want. But if, if the school is, is not good <laughs> yeah. and it doesn't have a good rating, yeah. good luck. Yeah, yeah. You're going to sleep at night, being like, one hundred percent. You know, where are my kids going? Right. Yeah. So, so that's where I, I kind of, you know, started focusing my my stuff with. Right. I've also been fortunate that, you know. I'm in the age now. I'm, I'm 36 now. You know, I'm kind of going through the motions, the, the life. I'm going through, you know, getting married and having kids and whatnot. So I'm living in, the, in my own home, and, I, and I'm realizing, like, this works. This doesn't work. This doesn't work. And, and what I'm finding is, is my clientele is getting younger. So when I started, the, 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 the person that's going to buy a $3 million home is probably between 50 and 60 years old. Where now it's like that person is, is honestly probably between 35 to, to, to 45, right? There's a lot of young pretend, uh, professionals in Toronto, a lot of young money in Toronto, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of like uh, second generation wealth that's coming. Mm-hmm. So I benefit from it because, you know, I have a lot of good interests. I got, I got, I got, I'm like, uh, you know, like, you know, like, you know, I, I feel like the things that I find that work in a home work for the average person for the average person right for the average right. person yeah right? yeah you know everybody yeah. now is like I, like entertaining like I, I built every home i build now is like all about entertaining m- m- not all yeah. about entertaining but it's like we focus on the entertainment but right? it, but it's what's going to create family memories right and and that's what a home is about to me is about how can i create more memories inside a home that we spend a lot of time in right so for me if i i'm a i'm a very big golfer i love golf but but golf has now started to make a big run in in many different countries uh my son golfs well i would probably prefer instead of having a theater room make it as a golf simulator how many more people if we made a simulator would actually be more attractive because they had a golf simulator inside their in their side of their house. If your kid's a hockey player, well, can we can we put and 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 and, and we got to look. You got to look at demographics, right? Yeah. We got to look at studies based on hey, you know, is is there is there it, what's really running with trends right now? What sports running with trends? I remember when the World Cup was going on of soccer. All of a sudden, all these kids you see them on the streets playing soccer. You know, so maybe if you're building a product. Maybe run a little soccer type of setting inside that inside that trend, yeah, golf or sports. That is really a big focal point when you're when you're starting to build trends in a, in a certain build too as well. Um, I remember when 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 the Raptors were making a big run, basketball it, courts, basketball, all of a sudden now <laughs> so all these custom course. all these custom every homes custom are coming home. with basketball courts, basketball courts in the backyard, every custom home, and, and, and that's and, how fast I, trend setting we, takes place, right? We, and you got to be involved that quick enough to know what trends are happening within the markets. We live in a city of Toronto, like I said before, it's untapped, and we live in a city in Toronto that's so multicultural that anything you do, somebody's gonna look at it and be like, "Fuck, I understand why this guy did that," right? So. I feel like in my industry, being safe, listen, at the end of the day, I don't want to build a bubble. And sometimes I drive by these like 
especially modern homes. I drive by a modern home in the city and be like, this guy just wanted to build a modern, this person just wanted to build a modern home and they, they didn't, you know, they didn't really you know, think it they out. Didn't think it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they didn't research the area and, and what fits and, and the house sticks out like a sore thumb. I'm not saying that, but I'm thinking that like, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that it's a very exciting time for, for, uh, builds in the city because do what you want. And, and the worst word is trends. Like, I, I go back into a house that I built five years ago and be like, fuck, I would never do this again. Right? But it's like, it's like, you know what? It might, it might be good for somebody else. Somebody might yeah. like it. Somebody still may want that. So there's no, there's, no, there's no such thing as what's in. There's no such thing as, as what's popular today. Or what you sells know, what, now. What sells now. What are the trends? You like the house? Fuck it, do it. What What's good for me may yeah. not be good for yeah. you. Yeah, and yeah. you know what? When you got to sell that house, you got to sell that house, worried about it at that time. Well, it's like me when I'm taking out clients and they see a house, I'm looking, I'm like, oh my God, I would never buy this house. It's not for me. And they're walking inside and they're like, oh my God, I love this house. It's so beautiful. What do you like about it? But <laughs> at the end of the day, it's their opinion. Yeah. They I, like it. They love it. I, and, and I'll let them, you know, I th- who am I? to uh tell them what yeah. what should be what they should like right I, I got, i'm not that guy i got the most ridiculous stat and i tell you all the time <laughs> you're a stats guy for yeah, sure. yeah. so do so, so stats uh, the guys that don't know anthony <laughs> man i gotta tell you every nhl stat you'll ever know the two stats that i always call you what every time we list a house i'm like nick we're gonna list for this much and you're like but no house has ever sold for that much <laughs> that's right i'll go fuck it we're gonna be the highest sold house on the street that's one stat we try to always be the highest sold house on the street but the other thing is uh I've never had a home buyer sell one of my homes. It's crazy. It's That's been, crazy. It's been 15 years. That's a crazy stat. It's been 15 years. I got guys calling me about wow. sh- a shingle blew off in a tornado. And I'll be like, dude, your carry-on expired in 2005. It's, sorry, 2015. Your, your carry-on expired. Yeah, but what are we? Fuck it, I'll sell my roofer, right? Because that's the reputation I want. But it's, it's crazy. Like, So going back to what I'm saying, I'm not trying to like boost my... Know, designs and stuff because i just said like i'll go into a house i built five years ago and be like i would never live in this house right but it's all up to what you as a as a person what you like so now every home buyer every home builder uh every person is exposed to instagram and social media and, and house and pinterest and they can they can see stuff that you know they they, they, they like and maybe their next-door neighbor doesn't have that stuff, but it doesn't matter. If you like it, do it. Right. And that's what I tell my homeowners. I say, do it. And they're like, sometimes I'll, I'll deal with these homeowners, and they'll be like, yeah, but, like, I've never really seen it done. Fuck it. You saw a picture? Let's try it. Like, who cares? Let's try it. I said, if there's some stuff that's, like, horrendous, I'll be like, yeah, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but, but I think that Toronto is so unique, and the architecture in Toronto is so is so unique and and untapped and there's so many talented builders architect uh architects engineers uh there's there's designers designers there's so much untapped uh potential where we are that we got to start taking advantage of it and it's even like what, what i say to you is like nick we're gonna market this house let's do something that nobody's doing in toronto like like fuck the walkthrough where you're like explaining the pantry and the, the kitchen and and you know and, and, oh, I got four bedrooms in this house like I, I, I'm yawning already yeah, and I tell you all the time and, I'm, and like Nick sometimes you do these and I'm like I'm like Nick you, uh, lo- yeah. you look so fucking bored all my podcasts <laughs> I listen to tell me to do this stuff so I go ahead and do it you know I'm but, like, do, do that. but you're right now yeah. it's like you know yeah, I don't yeah. want to do it yeah. so I want to so, be so we, we start you know we, like for instance the last house we sold where we did that I truly party. believe a house needs to sell itself yeah yeah that's what it is people don't give a shit about what the real estate agent's saying about the hardwood but the last house we sold uh, in, in Etobicoke, and I sold it to a beautiful couple, uh, beautiful, beautiful homeowners. And it's like, and I asked them, and so sorry, sorry to cut back, like it was your act, it was actually your idea to do a party there. Mm-hmm. And I said, Nick, do we really want 200 people walking into this house, drinking, having a party? We gotta sell the sizzle, man. <laughs> and, and that's what you said. You're like, this is an entertainer's house, we gotta entertain. And it's funny because I talk to the homeowners now. It's been a, it's been a few months now, and I talk to them and I say like, uh, 
you know, we became good friends. Actually, the guy lives down the street from me. <laughs> he comes over for, for for drinks and whatnot. And I say, and he tells me all the time. He's like, I drove by that party, and I saw that party you guys threw in that house that wasn't even listed yet. Right? He goes, I drove by that house, and I said, I looked at my wife and I said, Fuck, that's what I envisioned me doing. That, that's 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 what who we, we are. Envis- that's who we are. Right? That's who that's us entertaining. Right? Yeah. And, and uh, a lot of that young money wants to have a house that is very entertainable. Yeah. For sure. It's yeah, part of the trend yeah, setting that, today. That's what it is. And like, yeah. going back to the original, when we started this, I, I do such a cool job. I, I, I give people probably their most prized possession. You can have all the cars you want. Anybody can get a Ferrari, a Lamborghini. But your house, your house is sick. Right, you're 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 that's you're, loving, the dream. you're loving it. You're loving that's it. Yeah, that's the dream. Yeah, that's the dream. That's yes, the dream. Yes. And that's that's the dream, right? Yeah. So, so so if it's your it's your your house you're living in, if it's your vacation house or whatever. So so I have a responsibility to to make your your spot unique, right? Then then the next person, and uh, yeah, so like you know. We were kind of blabbering on here, but yeah, that that that's what's cool. Yeah, no, and and, and then that's awesome. And and uh, so I, I think we're hitting up to like forty five minutes on this episode. And I think we can do a two part episode on this for sure <laughs> through the conversation we have. Okay, my team. And, on and the this next has been one. fun. Next time we're gonna have a, a nice little cigar. We're gonna have a little drink. We're gonna do it in the evening. You know, and we're gonna make it a little bit more insane. We're gonna change the vibe of the of the of the revealing real estate podcast. This is wonderful. Uh, and I just want to leave off uh, on this note. Um, you know, we, we talked about implanting yourself into areas that we talk about schools. And, and, and that's the, one of the number one factors. So somebody, in my opinion, who's listening to the show, there's a tip right now that you can really dive into to say, hey, before I decide where I'm going to start building homes, one of the main strategies is l- look into, uh, and Fraser Institute of Canada will give you ratings on the top rated schools in, in the entire city of Toronto, or whatever district or, or, or location you want to build in. And as a real estate agent, when I first started out um, with my career, uh, you know, geo farming is a, is a really big component to what I do every single day. And I look at how I built my business and I built my brand and my advertising was focused generally within a specific location. But I did the research to make sure that that what was the highest turnover area in Woodbridge in my, where I live, where I wanted to, you know, establish myself and build my roots. And geo farming, I, 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 I looked at the research behind where do most homes get listed and well, sold every single and, year. And, and, and I didn't even know what geo farming was until last week when you were, you were, you were here. Yeah. And, and one of my friends who's a young real estate agent. Wanted and, some advice. And, on yeah, he called me and we were just talking and, and I'm like, I'm up with Nick right now. And he's like, oh, Nick. And he's like. Put me on speaker and put him on speaker. And he's like, hey, "What do you ask you? Like, what? he says, what do I need to do to generate business?'" Yeah, and then you start talking about geo farming. Question one, like, and I was like, "What the fuck is geo farming?" <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even really know too much about it. But just yeah. like, so it's cool to like hear that, right? Like, yeah, like, and, and exactly. And I want to reiterate, you know, the main purpose of my 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 topic that I'm discussing right now is that it's it's the same type of trend you got to when if you're a business entrepreneur and you're looking to start out within the business i'm speaking of those who haven't established because the people that have are established have already learned they've gone through the process they already know the trends they know what's good they know what's bad what markets to be in what, what markets not to be in um so whether you're a real estate agent uh or you're a home builder or you're a designer or you're an engineer you got to look at where you want to establish your career and your business and I think the number one advice that I can give somebody, and that I, I'm sure you can attest to this, is make sure you know your markets. Yeah. Do your research. Understand your product, whether you're even a car sale. If, listen, if I'm going to go in there and I'm going to go buy a Ferrari, and, and you're my salesman, and I'm going to be spending $400,000 on a vehicle, you better be able to tell me every single part of that car. Yeah. I want to know exactly what I'm buying. Guys, especially if you're going to build custom home builder, whatever. And, and there's there's so much work in this city for everybody who's listening to this to become a home builder. Believe me, i would be pumping you up. I, you know, like, but you need a key, you need, just some, there's some people you got to surround yourself around 
that are going to push your business and think about your interests. And a real estate agent is one of them for sure. Yeah. If I was in your position, I'd be saying the exact same thing. And I think somebody who, and you took away my last question for you because I think we're running into some time here now. And I think these cameras will probably die out. So we, we definitely going to have a second <laughs> part on this. Um, uh, my, my, my last question for you was what would be the key advice that you would give somebody who wants to be an inspiring Anthony Macri? Um, and, and I think you answered the question. Um, and I've always preached this on revealing real estate is making sure that you know how to surround yourself with the right team, whether you're looking to invest in real estate, whether you're looking to become a home builder, whether you're going to get a renovation company, whether you're going to become a landlord, um, and, or whether you're going to just start your own team in real estate, surround yourself with the right people that would become a very positive influence within your life that will better you not bring you back but move you forward and that's the key to success and i'm going to leave off with that and it was a pleasure to have you on the show <laughs> thank you this fucking show rocked thank i think it's going to perform as one of the best viewing shows there's one show with the, the, the fucking accountants i had on man right. these guys one guy this they guy mark colasanti man this guy Those he's over five and good. this guy's still getting views yeah, man yeah, i'll we'll tell you this much it's not fair instagram changed their algorithm eh? so uh, it's all about, it's all about from our marketing director that we got Jessica Ruffalo, who's wonderful on our team as, as now she does her research as well, knowing your product. Like we discussed, Instagram is all looking about carousels and photos. They're going back to that. So in all fairness to you, they're not looking at the video content and the viewership. It's all about carousels and photos. I don't know. But what I means. do believe this one's going to rock and roll. I have no fucking clue what that means. <laughs> 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 you know? Well, I'm down. I'm, I'm down to, to sit down with you anytime because we we had this we had this conversation yesterday or, or two days ago at Father's Day at your house, sorry. Right? So, so <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we did. We, we, we did. We, we, we were, we're, we're, we're fine. So good times. Good, good times. Thank and you very much. This was fun. This was yeah, fun. And thanks. Thanks yeah. for coming on. Well, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and guys, thank you for listening to the show. We'll uh, we'll look forward to seeing you, or or hopefully you can hear us next time. Thank you. Looking to buy or sell? Call a team you can trust. Don't believe me? Our Google reviews say it all. Put us on your lawn, your house will be gone. TheOPTeam.com.